Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Zwift Academy circuit race out on the Innsbruck Ring. We're doing four laps of the Innsbruck Ring today for the Team Dimension Data and the Canyon Shram Zwift Academy races. Now, this counts toward one of your two races that you need to complete if you are a part of the Zwift Academy. Uh, a little bit of information about the Zwift Academy. Thousands get fit, one goes pro. In partnership with Team Dimension Data as well as the Canyon SRAM Pro Teams, this is a groundbreaking training camp that's taking place, Talent ID program, where people compete in Zwift uh, in order to try and grab that pro contract at the end. Whichever rider amongst the 10 finalists uh, and then three finalists that ends up going to a training camp with the pro teams, whichever one ends up being the best fit for the team gets a pro contract. Pretty awesome program. Uh, we do have in the pens over in the men's race, it looks like a few riders lining up, a few in the women's uh, as well, with about 45 seconds to go to the start of the race. Uh, we also got a little bit of race information, I believe, out there for uh, what we have in store. And uh, the route details, they're going to be doing four laps of this 8.7 kilometers, 77 meters of climbing each lap 21 miles or 35 kilometers total you can use any equipment that you want to so riders are going to be grabbing probably the fastest bike uh, that they possibly can maybe not so much toward climbing those there are a couple of bikes out there that are better climbers so i'm expecting to see a lot of tron bikes for those who do have them so we're going to be looking for the favorites out here i think as far as the race goes this one's going to be all about showing what kind of uh, tactical racer you might be as well as what kind of big power outputs you're able to put out for short periods of time circuit racing is definitely a part of uh, these the talents that you need for circuit racing is definitely a part of uh, racing in the pro peloton so it's gonna be interesting to see go ahead and see if we can jump right on into this and see where things are gonna be for the start of the men's and the women's race uh, for the Zwift Academy circuit race out here out on the Innsbruck ring right from the get-go though usual We do have a pretty fast start up into the orange numbers And it does look like we do have Jay White here up toward the front of the men's race 5.3 watts per kilogram right now as you can see Mulcher uh, from the BRT team off the front a little bit here now You do see that there are a lot of categories on the right hand side of the screen there it is uh, a b and c and d categories that can jump into the race uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the categorization the ability to race with people around your level from all over the world is what that's all about in the d category riders who are able to hold up to 2.5 watts per kilogram for one hour straight or for their FTP, their functional threshold power, that's going to be a D category rider. For those in the C category, it's going to be 2.5 to 3.2 watts per kilogram for an FTP, functional threshold power. For the B category, it's 3.2 to 4.0. And in the A category, it's 4.0 or higher. You do see that they're all mixed together though today when it comes to the uh, the rider starting. It's not a staggered start. So all the categories start together. So if you can hang on and you end up being amongst the A's, you can kind of see whether or not you can hang on there if you need an upgrade or maybe get dropped off completely and you're way under on your average power, which you can check out over at ZwiftPower.com after the race. Also, you can see your average as well in the results immediately after the race when you cross. But if you do, um, you know, you, well, the staggered start is not a part of it today. And uh, as you can see, we do have all kinds of riders mixed together at the front end of the race B, A, C, D category riders even up in there. So... Uh, but it does look like as they're heading on over toward the first uh, challenging parts out on course here, we do have an initial group uh, forming about, it looks like 16, actually 20 riders at this point. 20 riders up toward the front. There are lots of them using their arrow power-ups already. Uh, for those who are not familiar with power-ups, they are in-game. Looks like a few have collected some. And it does, uh, our, the power-ups do give you slight advantages at times over other riders. You're able to collect those by simply uh, going underneath a KOM banner, a sprint banner, a start finish line banner, lap banner. As you can see, the arrow power up that's being used there improves your aerodynamics for 30 seconds straight uh, if you do use that. So it's a little bit of a tactical advantage. I like to say that it's comparable to some of the tactics that you can use in real life actually. Uh, uh, because there are all kinds of RNG or random number games that are played in nature out in real life actually where you do get advantages over other 
riders in a pack or peloton uh, simply from crosswinds or other things that might come on in. So uh, looking through here now, we are seeing it is going to be this lead group of 20, though. And nobody really looking like they want to make any attacks. It looks like they're fairly uh, quiet at this point. A little bit of what we like to call holding hands. You know, it is a four-lap race. So with it being a four-lap race, I think some of the riders, now that they have made the lead group, are just holding a few of their matches to try to keep things uh, under wraps at this point and not take off right from the get-go, not use too much uh energy right right off the bat now from the women's side of things though this is interesting to see actually uh we actually have up toward the front of the race right now claudia bearing i'm seeing from team draft one of the fastest women out on zwift that we know of. she has part participated in the cvr world cup uh at a very high level definitely taking some podium at the cvr world cup before uh we are also seeing it looks like gallagher up there from the cis cycling there and then it's going to be Pertella, group of three off the front now at this point. I go it there as well. 20 seconds back. Group of, it looks like, one, two, three, four riders now on the back end of this race now at this point. So, uh, I go Q, it looks like there. Bell, and then it will be Athens here coming out of Australia. Trying to make that chase, but with such a strong group up toward the front there, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult to try and bring that back. But 23 seconds now I'm seeing... Uh, is the gap up to it looked like Portella at the moment? She was trying to go off the front for just a, for just a second, but doesn't look like that's going to be happening uh, anytime soon. Coming out of the USA, we do have three USA flags off the front here now. It looks like, and it makes a lot of sense. Though being a North American broadcast that we're trying to focus on uh, for this time right now. Now, if you do want to interact with the broadcast, you can do so. We are watching the chat over on Mixer. Uh, as we do get a quick little time out there for a little bit of somebody. There you go, buddy. Uh, appreciate the chat, but uh, we'll give that one a time out. But uh, we also do see all of the chat coming in over at Facebook on the Zwift Facebook page. If you do want to interact there, we can bring in any of your comments. Harry Sliff saying that Innsbruck is tough. I got passed by a runner on the 12% gradient. Now, the uh, Innsbruck, especially the big climb out there, it's 20 to 30 minute climb. I mean, that is one of the toughest climbs in the world of Zwift. But we also have this kicker on the Innsbruck ring that takes about 30 seconds to a minute, I think, to climb. And it definitely is a wall of a climb. And that is kind of the equalizer out on this course. So I'd definitely be watching out for that to be the next place that these riders try and take a little bit of a shot at each other. Probably not going to see too much action until that point. But when we do hit that point, it's going to be gloves off, I believe, for these this pack of three for the women, and then as well in the and then we do have this pack of four with this chase as well. We might actually see, I might predict somebody who fell off the back uh, in this chase group for the women. I, we might actually see a situation where one of them that might have that kind of effort to bridge might try and do so. Now, if there are attacks though with that front group early on at this point, which if there are with only three in there, it'll be really interesting because the reality is to try and get away at this point with how much racing that is left, we might not see that actually take place. So we'll have to see um, if they are able to hold off tactically that chase group of four because if you get away right now, you're solo for quite a long time. You know, we're probably looking at a little bit of an hour of racing here. So it's going to be a difficult, uh, very difficult uh, situation if they do find themselves at the front. So there is an opportunity here for Bell, Athens, as well as Q, and A out there, as you do see, just a little ways back, uh, about 30 seconds, to maybe close something down and make something happen here for the women. Now, back into the men's racing, though, uh, I do see up at the front end of the Team Dimension data race, it does look like we do have... Uh, so it does look like uh, we do have Windsor here, right now up toward the up toward the front and then matt johnson from odz now making an attack up into 6.1 watts per kilogram as you can see 6.5 8.6 here coming from uchi now we said that this was going to be the moment of truth for these riders especially early on on this on this first lap they are with such a large group 20 plus riders they're going to try and break this up every single lap until it whittles down a little bit more one out of 20 not great chances into a sprint situation. I mean, it looks like with a two second gap now, Tiuchi here now getting off the front out of Japan. Weeman ATX there out of the US of A, followed by Jay White coming out of Canada. Then we do have Gulet there too from Velocity. Johnson, ODZ, 
well-known racer out on Zwift from that team ODZ trying to hang out with this group. I think there isn't going to be any attacks to try and get away from this. If these four riders, five riders actually, with two on the back there, actually now we're looking at three more making the gap up there. I don't think they're going to be attacking too hard. I think they're going to allow Uchi here to get away a little ways, let him dangle out there, and then close it down with the reality of the draft in a pack. But it does look good. The Japanese are showing up for a serious attack, though, and trying to get away because he's holding that solid 4.8 watts per kilogram on the front end of this pack right now. Six seconds to continue to go out. We'll see if this can hold as the rider solo on the front here is looking for a TT effort, perhaps, or maybe waiting for one rider to come across, but without a lot of motivation and a lot, not a lot of time on that gap at this point. A lot of these riders will say, you know, what's the point? I'm not sure. That this is going to stick so perhaps we're just going to have to sit and wait pull this back in and this will be our lead group now Kefra here along with Baba now they got their work cut out for them they can close this down 173 beats per minute most likely up and over threshold as we're seeing that heart rate drift way out there for Kefra Richards is there as well coming right on through now an arrow power up though coming from it looks like uh, Dowling here now, 4.0 watts per kilogram. He's going to be catching back up to the other two B riders up there. And it's going to be about a 20 second gap they're going to be looking to close. But it looks like it's all back together just about here as Uchi is not giving up the ghost just yet. Still kicking a little bit. And then comes right back into the pack. So it looks like the two Canadians on the front here, LaBelle, Goulet now out of velocity. We'll see if they have any plans actually to be working together. LaBelle though without a heart rate monitor on. Be interesting to see if uh, he's able to put one back on before or have one on before the end of the race because race rules do state with ZwiftPower.com not able to win a race officially without that hurry monitor on. So it does look like things are cooling down a little bit. Just a steady pull at the front there with Jay White and Johnson there at 4.0 watts per kilogram. Find later uh from it looks like windsor here now windsor windsor door what is this name windsor door racing that's what it is there we go it's, it's, it's cycling through and uh coming out of the uk late night or very early morning uh perhaps unless he's racing here in the us of a underneath the uk flag or somewhere over here in the uh, other side of the world. So looking back a little ways though, we do have a sea router that made it in here. Maybe a little bit of an upgrade in um, needed here for it looks like Rhaegar, or maybe just hanging on by uh, his fingernails at this point, clawing his way back in as we can see. But Dowling here now 7.1 watts per kilogram on a full on attack, maybe caught off guard. It looks like with the kind of power that he does have, but it is so difficult to close this kind of a gap down. And since he is doing it, he, I would actually say he, if he rests up early on here after closing this gap down, if he can, three seconds can feel like forever, but if he can close this down, uh, it'll be interesting to see because this kind of an effort might show that this rider has a definite ability to take the win out here today. So I'd be watching out for Dowling. That's a prediction for me here. He's going to rest up, get some reprieve as he sits in the draft, and then maybe look for him for some serious attacks later on in the race. We do see him going down to zero watts per kilogram for a moment there and just going to sit in, slide in there. And that makes it a lead group, it looks like, of 10 riders now for the W out here. So good to see a uh, strong group up toward the front here. The chase group does hold Nomura Baba. Rivera's there as well. T Swift is up in here. It looks like we'll give T Swift uh, a ride on there uh, with a little play on words. C Richards is there as well. And Keffer has made this group. We did see him earlier. Actually, this is a large group of riders that's starting to form here. The main Peloton, I would say, for the chase. Looks like it's about maybe 12 riders that have made this chase group. But it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of motivation to close down the gap up, a front, up ahead. A lot of times, you know, with the attacks that you do see, up and over the top of those climbs and the effort that's put out there they're just looking for some reprieve because they know what's coming next they're pretty sure at this point they're not gonna be able to handle the attacks from those front riders so a lot of times they just let that go and uh as we do see jay white holding a steady 4.5 at the front here at 153 beats per minute these boys at the front are definitely not slowing down just about to finish up their first lap though of four out on this on this uh Circuit race out here today. First place currently being held on by Jay White. Now, there's no 
there's nothing uh, super special about coming across first, uh, but it looks like he is making a little bit of an attack here for the lap. So interesting to see. Now, as we are looking at the finish line, there will be uh, there's the group of riders as they do come through. Um, as the it looks like Jay White, K. LaBelle here, as well as Norman. Now just going to look to close this down, but this is a pretty serious attack at this point. Um, and the uh, the riders, it looks like, maybe under a little bit of distress because nobody seems super interested to close this down. Actually, I think they just don't think it's going to stick and that White's going to come right back in, back in. He's not holding anything over 5.0 for this attack. So just two seconds off the front, maybe showing off a little bit for the finish start-finish line there. So... Uh, good to see that uh, he's holding steady, though. Now at about 4.2 watts per kilogram. Goulet now is going to close it right on down, and that attack is done. Now, Dowling called him out earlier as maybe somebody to watch out for. Looked like there's a little bit of frustration coming from the rider as he definitely got dropped off uh, early on and showed himself to be somebody to, to, that, to be reckoned with because closing down a gap like that was, it was out to 30 seconds at one point, and he came right on back to this lead group. So... Again, I'd be watching out for Dowling. Back in with the women, though, we do see that uh, Portella here, along with Baring, they've actually been able to grab uh, this 50-second gap. It looks like that took place uh, probably up and over the top of the climb. And they're about to come through the start-finish line in just a moment here. It does look like 53 seconds, though, back to Ayot and Gallagher. So... Uh, it was a group of three, which is interesting to see what's going on here. There was a bridge that took place from, I believe it was Iote, that was able to close that down. And uh, they were all together there. But now as we do look through, there goes Portella and Baring. Portella's the first one to come across the line, it looks there, leading things out, 4.1 watts per kilogram. And then behind them, it is going to be Gallagher from CIS and Iote. They're coming out of uh, Canada, riding unattached now. Three more laps to go. Claudia's letting everybody know, so good to see Barry in here looking steady, able to type during the efforts even at this point. So uh, Claudia Barry, 147 beats per minute currently. We'll go ahead and give her a ride on, and then it's going to be Pertella here currently sitting, it looks like, at a 164 or so. So good to see uh, the riders pretty steady at this point. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, efforts are going to put them in any kind of distress. I'm sure that Claudia is just sitting on at this point, keeping it real cool with that super low heart rate. We haven't seen any kind of drift from it so far at this point. So, again, very experienced rider. Coming from that team draft, very well-known racing team out on Zwift. And Claudia Barron actually, I believe, yeah, is the uh, Zwift national champion for the U.S. of A. right now. Draft actually holding down both of those, both on the men and the women's side, with Adam Zimmerman holding down the men's. Uh, national championship jersey out on Zwift right now. So definitely be watching out for that national champion. She's the favorite, I would say, out here with Pertella. But Pertella taking the brunt of the work with 4.2 watts per kilogram on the front of the race right now. Baring just sitting in and waiting to pounce, I believe. But I'm not sure the attack was too intense, though, up and over the top of the climb. You know, ZwiftPower.com actually have some, some great resources about that. Um, they've added all of these... Uh, very cool data analytics for the races where you can see where the main attacks were taking place uh, out on course actually and uh, see the numbers that are you know the main places where the riders were actually on the full-on attack and what kind of uh, numbers they're putting down on each part of the course it's very cool updates that they've been including lately so it does look like on the women's side though it is still going to be um as i look through here on zwiftpower.com um a lot of women that still need to enter actually into or opt in excuse me opt in still actually to the zwiftpower.com um over on my.zwift.com so if you haven't done if you haven't done that yet make sure to do so uh because most of the results are going to be for all the racing out on Zwift are going to be tracked over at ZwiftPower.com. So head on over to your my.zwift.com or just log in over at Zwift.com and make sure to check your connections. And if you are going to be racing a lot and you want to uh, be able to track your results over there, make sure to opt in over there for your data to be shared and you're going to be able to be tracked for all of the race results. So Baron here still sitting in 3.1, 3.3 watts per kilogram. 
Calmer point out on in the race at this point, it looks like, again, I think this is going to be the usual that we see on this circuit. It's going to be pretty calm, not a whole lot of action, followed up by crazy fireworks every lap for the climb uh, up and over the top of that little kicker that we see each lap now. But now the negative 3% grading, we just see the speeds come up to 46 kilometers per hour now. Patel is still taking the brunt of the work as Bering just sitting in, playing it smart. Not a whole lot to worry about behind her. As we are seeing Gallagher here, it looks like with AO not really closing things down, letting things go out actually as they rest up, waiting for their next time. It doesn't look like they're under threat either, as we do have Q and Athens there. A little ways back, 42 seconds, and then 56 seconds for Athens there at about 2.5 watts per kilogram. So nice little gap there between the riders still. As uh, we do see Athens here now getting a ride on with 2.4 watts per kilogram now. About 16 seconds back. Bell there now six seconds back from her, as you can see, 2.8 watts per kilogram, as well as Armand now. A little bit of a uh, group now forming there behind, trying to chase things down. Still anybody's race, it looks like here, between the three riders uh, that are, well, the one, two, three we're seeing, yeah, about three, four riders actually for that third place, as we do see Kiel, Athens, Mond, and Bell, all within about 25 seconds of each other at this point. It does look like uh, up front, though, Gallagher on a little bit of attack. It looked like for a second there, but wasn't able to get any distance between herself and Iot there. So it looks like uh, still going to be all the same here at this point with these two on the front there with Baring and uh, Portella still taking the brunt of the work. Uh, it will be Portella all day long with Baring there sitting in. Back in with the men though, we are uh, going to be seeing the attacks again in just a moment. And it does look like Jay White now, 4.6 watts per kilogram. Still on the front. He's been doing a lot of work, it looks like. Always up to the front. Doesn't want to find himself toward the back, though, at this point, because this is when it matters the most. If you find yourself at the back, that one, two, three, four meters or so is definitely going to hurt if you have to make it up on the climb. Because when the numbers start to ride, you know, start, really start to go up, start to see those orange numbers, we start to see the real power start to come from the legs. Closing down meters at that point is the most difficult thing. So being positioned well is so incredibly important out on Zwift. We do see Golette here, Velocity now. On the attack, first one to go. Not really getting a lot of space still between himself and the other riders. We are seeing seven watts per kilogram currently from him. A little bit of a gap as we can see here though. It's not quite out, I think, to 10 meters though. It is definitely a draft there still. If he doesn't gain any more distance, most likely not going to be going anywhere. We do see Norman here, though, falling off the back there. 102 RPM. We'll give him a ride on. No uh, hurry monitor. So we can't see how much the suffering is quite there. But Dowling there, just sitting on the back. He was a rider that did close things down very quickly. Looks like he's just biding his time. I don't think he's super interested in any real attacks at this point. Maybe waiting for the later play, later times in the race to make anything real happen at this point. But Dowling here now, 5.2. LaBelle was off the back a little bit there. Now is the kick in the orange numbers, able to close it right on down. But there goes Norman. Another one bites the dust off the back there at zero watts per kilogram, full on uh, nuclear at this point. And he may be waiting up for Baba and Richards, but make sure you finish it up. Uh, if anybody, if you do get dropped off at any point, make sure you do finish the race. That's not having a good day. Make sure you try and finish whatever you enter because it still counts towards the two races you do need to complete for the Zwift Academy. And again, for those of you unfamiliar, there are, with the Zwift Academy, three different kinds of races you can do. You have to finish two of them. And circuit race, the TT, and, and then there's also the climb race out on the Innsbruck ring. Now, here's the thing about these. It's kind of all about showing off your talent, actually, uh, comparatively between the different disciplines. So today, it's gonna be all about the punchy efforts that you see in crit racing. That's what this is. This this today is all about with the corners, the climb, and the tactics that are take that it takes to sit in and wait for the right moment and get that W and put out. You know, I think a lot of times when they look at these races, it's it's going to be all about those who are able to have a low cardiac drift throughout the race on top of a really really high power output when it comes time to sprint when it comes time to close down gaps when it comes time to be tactical and are you the one to close it down and be the ruler if somebody does get away you you tend you, uh, you you're the one that tends to close down those gaps and take down the charge 
to um, lead the pack to maybe bring that back. You know, you're able to show off different kinds of talents during circuit races like this. But uh, we do see LaBelle here trying to show off a little bit of talent. Now 5.5 on the front. And interesting the way he's going about this is it's not a full-on off the front attack. Uh, but rather more of a 5.5, five, just steady on the front FTP kind of thing. And if anybody's really hurting right now, that might do something to this pack. I'd be surprised if this breaks it apart. Usually with the likes of Matt Johnson in here, uh, Uchi, who we saw earlier go full on into the 8 watts per kilogram, I think there's plenty of firepower here to bring that back. So I don't, I don't think it's any kind of spot of bother for any of them. I don't think anyone's hurting too bad. I think they just knew it was coming right on back and they didn't want to waste too much energy. So they just kind of allowed him to go off the front a little bit and then let the tempo do its work as it needed to. So, and it looks like uh, we got a couple of uh, comments coming on through. Joseph Cooley, good to see you hanging out in the broadcast. And he's coming out of Arizona. Good to see you there. We also see David Torellio coming in saying, Go Bears! <laughs> Go Bear! Now, are you coming out of Chicago then? I'm, win I'm assuming that's because of the Windy City. But good to see you there, David, as well, tuning in to the broadcast now. So, again, Dowling on this section of the course seems to be strong always, uh, you know, Showing off a little bit. I mean, he's on the front end of the of the pack here, but seems to always uh, come through fairly strongly at this point. I have a feeling we're going to be doing again. I keep on saying it, but I think it's going to come down, in my opinion, from what I've seen so far for the work being done and the the tactics being played. Matt Johnson and Dowling is my prediction as far as the head to head race. Maybe Weeman as well as Goulet, Jay White might be able to upset. Perhaps it'll be a lower category rider, somebody who's registered for the B category that happened to make it into this front end group. We do have a uh, fine later here coming from Windsor Racing. So uh, Windsor, Windsor Door Racing, we'll see um, if perhaps these riders are actually A category riders. So um, oh, go bearing, David Torellio is saying, this, oh, saying over at the uh, Zwift Facebook comments, though. So saying go bear, speaking of... Claudia Bearing. So go Claudia Bearing. He's letting us know there. Uh, what camera feature is that we're getting from uh, David Torellio? That is super special cap camera features uh, just, for, just for you guys there, David. So we do have Pratella there up at the front now. Let's get jump back into the women's race. And it looks like, speaking of Bearing and Pratella, they're about to uh, climb a little bit here. And uh, it does look like their gap just continues to open up. 3.8 watts per kilogram. Patella still doing most of the work as we're seeing. Bearing here sitting in 3.9, 2.9. Not uh, too much of an effort there having to be uh, taken out. Now we are seeing a little bit of a drift though. Claudia is up into that 157 beats per minute so far. So um, she was all the way down in the 132, 140 or so. But after going up onto the top of that climb, it does look like uh, it has come up a little bit and it's been coming a little more difficult. A little more difficult to actually sit on to the wheel of Pratella. So interesting to see. We'll see if uh, that continues to rise. But we are seeing a drift actually a lot right now. Almost up in the 160s here coming from Bering. So uh, as we do see the race go on, usually the drift does go out as the resources in the body do start to get used up. Looking back a little bit though, Ayot here was able to break away on the climb, as you do see here, uh, as she comes down on the other side of it. 57 seconds now, uh, it looks like, between herself and Gallagher. Huge gap opened up between Ayot and Gallagher now at 59 seconds. It looks like Gallagher going backwards. She, Gallagher was a part of the initial break, actually, out here and has maybe earned a couple too many matches. So Gallagher now 103 back from the rider we're looking at now, Ayot. And then it will be Mond here about 10 seconds back from Gallagher. And Q there 12 seconds right along with him. So Mond, Q, uh, chasing down Gallagher. I have a feeling that this is all going to come together between Gallagher, Mond, and Q actually uh, behind now. So 321 though is the gap up to them from that chase group. So... As we are seeing, it looks like Q there, about 2.0 watts per kilogram currently. 147 beats per minute, not a whole lot of effort there coming from that rider. But now it's going to be Mond and Q working together to bring back Gallagher, maybe a group of three that will form to make a chase. I don't think they're going to see Iota again. We'll have to see, though. Two minutes and a lot of racing left to go. You know, it's still going to be about 
uh, two laps, two laps to go. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can close that down. If they do work together well. I know it is solo at this point, but is able to hold a solid uh, 3.1 watts per kilogram. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, this rider does hold off the rest of the riders or if she's burned too many matches as well. But she was able to drop off Gallagher. We'll see if she does suffer for that later as the riders do try and bring this back. All right, we're looking through here. It looks like a couple of comments coming on through. James McGarren says, go, Nathan. Thanks, I appreciate it. But we're cheering on the riders out here. Too. I appreciate the, that very much, though, James. Chris Abramo Min saying, so in Zwift races, we have a duck, a lion, a python, and a bear. And from what David's saying, there's a boar, a wolf, and a fox, too. And uh, we were watching Matt Brandt from Team Draft earlier, actually. He is, from what I hear, the wolf out there. And uh, Chris needs an animal alter, alter ego. Uh, and chat, let us know who Carissa should be. Please let us know what's what's the, what's the alter ego for Carissa. Back into the men's racing, though, we are coming in to, um, I believe, the second lap now at this point. And it is White and Weeman here. Now, Weeman, we haven't seen a whole lot from him. ATX, uh, for quite a while, actually, he's been sitting in pretty tactical so far. Now taking up the charge at the front, this is interesting to see. Perhaps been sitting as a little bit of a wild uh, wild card in here. Dark Horse, we'll have to see if he makes any attacks. It does look like we did get a little bit of a calling here. As it does have only seven riders in this front group. It is Norman here, 56 six seconds back or so. It does look like Windsor actually... Uh, as we are getting a little bit of time differences here that we're uh, that are a little bit odd out on course there So it does look like that is all still together, but seven riders here up toward the front now LaBelle making his way to the front white keeps on taking like, you know Taking these poles toward the front at this section of the course. It seems like each one of the riders kind of likes their own uh, Spot on the course that they feel good that they tend to take a couple of the uh, take the headwind For the rest of the group actually so it does look like the orange jersey is on LaBelle for the fastest lap Currently out on this course right now. LaBelle 4.4 watts per kilogram. Goulette there now, as you can see, 3.1. No heart rate on Goulette. LaBelle as well. So they're not going to be actually win the race officially. So Jay White here, not going to have to worry about them too much. Dowling here, 155 as well as White right in that 150s. Matt Johnson, ODZ down to 127. This is a rider we've seen sprint many times out on Zwift. And if he can hang on to the end of this race and get in on that sprint i'd be watching out for matt johnson actually uh to take the w out here now it does look like he has chosen to take on uh this race today without the tron bike he's on the cervello it looks like with are those the uh which wheels is he on there i believe he is on the trek sl wheels i don't think those are the mindsteins because uh those are um a little bit deeper dish, I believe. So choosing the Cervelo there, S5, along with uh, I believe that is the uh, Bond Trigger SL wheels. But we, I can't I can't first say that for sure actually because they're spinning a little bit too fast for me to pick up on that though. Uh, looking through here, uh, David Torello says opens a can of worms. I don't know if a can of worms is exactly the alter ego that Carissa was looking for there, David. So <laughs> as I did open up a can of worms, so. And uh, good to see over at uh, Mixer as well. Good to see uh, Carissa hanging over there, holding down the admin, as well as Jojo Dog saying hello. For you guys who have not checked out yet, you can watch any day that we are live, anytime that we are live. We are live over on streaming platforms as well as VODs over on YouTube. So we are live currently over on Twitch as well as Mixer. And then our VODs are all on the... Um, are on YouTube. Now it does look like we are looking at some of the wheels that are currently being used out here. It does look like currently the rider that we're looking at is using the Zwift Carbon disc wheels actually. Is that correct that we actually met Johnson's on the, a disc wheel at this point? I'd be super surprised Surprised as I'm not seeing the disc spinning there in the middle of that wheel but perhaps that is what's going on here uh, and it's just hard to see. While the riders are going along but from what we're looking at here there is the speed as well as the weight only two stars on each of those um as they are as they that is their ability that they give to the rider out there so maybe matt not uh, holding on to a tron bike currently we'll have to wait and see 
uh, if we can ask him after the broadcast or, or sometime during the broadcast, he could jump into the socials here and let us know why he made that pick because I'd be really surprised if Matt Johnson does not have the Tron bike out there. So we are looking at Jay White here, 5.9 watts per kilogram up toward the front. This is another moment of truth for the riders here. 8% gradient, as you can see. And the attack here from Johnson now, 5.9 watts per kilogram, but it's not in the orange numbers. It is Goulet here now uh, from Velocity, and then it will be fine later here coming from that Windsor Door Racing. Weeman now 6.6 .6 watts per kilogram. Jay White now, it looks like 6.4, but the gap is opening up. Johnson on the attack, 6 watts per kilogram. We're not seeing 7 or 8 this time through. The riders look to be getting a little bit more tired or perhaps holding back. I think the attack is going to be full on up into 8, 9 watts per kilogram for the win, actually, later on in the race. There is the description there for everybody on the lightweight earlier. For those of you who might be wondering, it does actually lower the weight of the rider for 30 seconds actually i believe it is it's uh 15 seconds actually on the feather power up but uh maybe i'm wrong about that i always thought it was shorter i always felt shorter uh for the riders there but 2.5 watts per kilogram here for labelle winter door racing sitting on a 3.1 nobody really able to drop anybody off at this point norman here holding steady at that one minute but that's going to go out because of the climb and then down into the downhill i wouldn't be surprised if it opens up all the way to about two or three minutes by the end of this little section here. So still all together there with about seven riders in here together. And uh, looking through, it looks like another attack now from White. Not serious, though. Maybe just keeping things steady at the front, not letting anybody come around at this point. A lot of times for the riders, it is uh, all about positioning. As you see the little bit of a kicks because you do get a little bit nervous as you end up at the back of groups like this. You want to be able to follow anything that might come your way. So Jay White 2.7. Heart rate starting to fall. I think we're going to see some hand holding. We're going to be going into the last lap in a moment here. And I believe we are going to have an under an hour race actually here. These boys are absolutely fine. 32 miles per hour you're seeing here up on the screen. 15 miles in as you can see. And uh 722 feet of climbing so far now Goulet here letting us know that he's not going to be holding hands up into a thousand watts actually 106 rpm Goulet here trying to get away opens up an immediate gap now labelle saying okay i'll go lighter along with that no maybe not that was a little too much down to 5.7 and now here's the thing in these situations if you want to go with this kind of attack you attack the same you know, if you want to just pull that back in and that's all you want to do, and you want to take your chances with the sprint, then you do what you see is happening on the front here. You just hold a steady threshold to over threshold pace, but you do not attack full on. So now we are seeing it looks like that is exactly what LaBelle is doing. And it is very interested in the whole pack being back together rather than attacking, getting on that wheel, and then working together with the rider that has gotten away. If you want to form a breakout on Zwift, it's all about orange number attacks full-on sprints just like in real life when you see the peloton break early on in a stage a lot of times uh you'll see full-on attacks uh into the sprint efforts way 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 over threshold over vo2 max even and then the gaps will open up another rider will go another rider will go then they'll start working together without anybody drafting on them at this point with the tactic on the front to here though we're simply going to see the pack pull them back in as steady pace that's not going to do too much johnson actually not too interested in that though as we are seeing he is definitely interested in forming a break here down in that 143 beats per minute so he definitely has the the power to work with nine watts per kilogram white they're not able to respond to the orange numbers as you can see here johnson's going to hold seven watts per kilogram as long as he possibly can close it down quickly there's nobody drafting him at this point at all so without that draft on him he's completely safe at this point just to close things down not drag anybody with him if anybody wants to go with him they got to burn the exact same matches. Exact same matches that he just burned, meaning that he is not wasting any effort because he is forcing the other riders that are chasing him down to burn that same effort. Now, here's the thing. If LaBelle just does the work and, and they draft on him, though, there's a reality that the other riders behind aren't wasting any effort. So doesn't look like LaBelle's doing that, though. He is not giving a draft. Dowling here, going to have to close it down now, I think. Now this has completely put a lot of these riders on the back foot as Dowling finds himself two seconds back from Johnson and LaBelle and Goulet, who's off the front there just a little bit. It looks like three riders now forming up. Are they going to be able to keep this together, though, and get away? It doesn't look like it. It looks like Weeman's going to get a free ride right along with Windsor and Dowling. 
come right back together. But it's still not said and done. As you do see them echelon out one long straight line. We could see the counter attack coming through the start finish line here in just a moment. We'll have to see if that does work out actually as we are looking here at it looks like the uh, Weeman, Fine Later, and LaBelle. All, all able to close that down. White at the front end of the main pack now. 5.0. Dowling, Goulet now it looks like. All together. And still, seven. All closed down. No counterattack. And White just set a steady high effort at the front now, as you can see. So uh, now down to 3.2, 4.1. They know it's the last lap as they start it right here. So it's going to all be all about who's got the kick perhaps up onto the top of the climb or a sprint to the line. That's what it's going to be all about here, I believe, as there is no counter. Still about, I'd say, 12 to 15 minutes of racing to go. Back in with the women, though. Let's go ahead and see how things are going over there. As we do have all together, actually. This is interesting to see. Portella and Barry now still on the front now. On their way down the climb. The attacks aren't too serious. Iot here now, as you can see, 2.7 watts per kilogram, a little ways back. Not caught, but definitely under threat, though, with only 29 seconds uh, for Iot and Armand now. Uh, chasing that down with Gallagher, who was caught. That was the prediction we made a little bit earlier. So Gallagher, who did fall off the pace from Iot, as she did make that attack up over the top of the climb, was caught now as a part of group of three. But the reality of that was that we thought that perhaps being a group of three, Mond, Gallagher, Q, might be able to close things down because of their concerted effort together. 26 seconds up to the Canadian trying to hold it down. But look at how quickly that is dropping. 25 seconds. It's going to I mean maybe the climb, though, is going to be the equalizer for these ladies. We'll have to see if that does work out for the Canyon Tram Racing, uh, Canyon Tram Racing teams. Uh, Zwift Academy for the women here. Barry now at the front, 2.8. We haven't seen her in the front end of the race a whole lot. As she just sits in uh, with Bertella as she's been willing to do a lot of the work now. But uh, as they have about a lap and a half to go, Barry looks to be looking for her moment to pounce here. But up into 176 beats per minute. That heart rate has seriously um, drifted out, actually. It's interesting to see. Now, back in with the men's race, though, the women's has settled down a little bit, but the men's race, we are seeing Matt Johnson full-on attack with an arrow power-up from way out, way before the climb, actually. They're about to hit the bridge over here in just a moment, and Johnson, 6.3 watts per kilogram. Arrow power-up has popped now, as you can see. LaBelle there, two seconds back. Goulet now seeing the threat. They're going up in the 6.4 watts per kilogram, as you can see. Trying to come on through to close that gap down to Matt Johnson. LaBelle now, it looks like up into the orange number, nine watts per kilogram, as they're about to take that right-hand turn over toward the bridge. And Dowling now sitting in. White sitting in. Actually, no, White off the back by three seconds, actually. This is a serious moment for these riders. They're going to have to close this down right now as he's using an arrow power-up. They saw some weakness. There's somebody in the pack saw that so, that these riders were in a little bit of a trouble with maybe not enough effort to close things down. And, and yep, that looks exactly what happens as Weeman from ATX now is off the back. White now trying to hang on. It looks like the Windsor's wheel as he's pulling on through at 4.2 watts per kilogram. But it's four seconds. And Johnson not slowing down. Five watts per kilogram, 160 beats per minute. And we said it earlier, he would be one to watch out for in the sprint. But look at this, going for the TT effort solo. Goulet now trying to close it down with LaBelle and Dowling. If they all get together, this will be curtains maybe for Jay White and find later from Windsor Door Racing now. And will this stick, though? That is the question. 5.1, 5.3 watts per kilogram, 37 meters. Look at the bottom of the... If you look at the bottom of the screen right here, you can see exactly how many meters, up to 50 meters, you can see how far the gap is and whether or not it's closing down. 5.1, 4.3 watts per kilogram. If we look over the shoulder here, that's all the gap is between Matt Johnson and D Dowling, who's trying to close down another gap for the second time uh, with his race on the line here. It looks like Dowling now 4.8 watts per kilogram. LaBelle is sitting in. Goulet now trying to bring it back as well. Three riders working together to bring back the ODZ rider of the US of A, but it's just stuck here. Four seconds, four seconds, four seconds, not going anywhere. And how long, though, can Matt Johnson hold on to this kind of an effort? 4.8 watts per kilogram now currently from him, and these three now working together. And we have a prediction here from Chris is saying, well, she's saying gutsy move. David Torello now saying he won't keep it. We'll have to wait and see. Six seconds, though, it continues to go out. 
if the motivation goes out or the reality of these riders not being able to hold this kind of a power, like what if they just don't have the power to do it? It's a good prediction. I would predict similar, but Matt Johnson now still gaining time though over these riders and the climb is about to happen. He's got, he's, yeah, and this is true, Bradley Pete. Matt Johnson, that's why I predicted him for a sprint because he has got a huge motor. But here's the thing. Is it all wasted? It's before the climb. What if the climbers come out and just go flying by him? He's only got six seconds. That's not a whole lot of time the second that they do hit that climb because it's about distance, and that distance is going to close down very quickly. On the climb, that's more like one or two seconds. So we'll have to see how this ends up playing out here. Johnson's still holding more watts per kilograms than these other riders, but we'll have to see how this works out. Uh, who's the largest guy in the front runners right now? I would say Andrew Weber. That's a great question, actually, coming on through over at Zwift's Facebook. Uh, if we do check ZwiftPower.com as far as the riders' weights do go, it would be, uh, it looks like Matt Johnson, actually, amongst the riders that are in the front group right now at a solid uh, around 80 kilograms, I believe. There's also, though, Goulet, though, also sitting in. At 80 kilograms as well they have actually been averaging uh matt johnson it looks like averaging right around 3.7 watts per kilogram the highest watts per kilogram amongst that group is actually julian white at about 4.1 uh but uh amongst those riders goulet as well as johnson most likely the sprinters interesting to see this maybe he didn't think he could hang on and this is just an early attack here to try and fade climb over the top and not actually get dropped. So looking back though, Dowling seven seconds, they're letting it go. It's it's still going out. It's almost up to 10 seconds. This is dangerous as Johnson is able to hold on to about 5.0 watts per kilogram almost. Dowling now 4.5, LaBelle now 4.5 as well. Will they close it down on the climb? The lightest rider among them will be Darren Dowling. 65.8 kilograms is we're seeing in here. He's averaged a solid 4.0, his best for five minutes is right around 316 or 4.8 watts per kilogram max heart rate uh for these riders not sure that doesn't show actually in the live results uh we might be able to bring that in though in a little bit here Matt johnson though here now 528 watts gonna have to hold this to the very very top over six watts per kilogram we'll have to see if he can do so there's the gap behind you can see the riders trying to close it down they've got 7.6 labelle now up into eight watts per kilogram he is kind of fade climbing at this point but can he hold on where will will there be any kind of continuance over the top from the chase group. He might have a second or two up over the top here. LaBelle, 6.4 watts per kilogram. Still trying to close it up, but Matt Johnson able to hold on to 6.6. Three seconds is the difference. It's three seconds, but that's going to go out to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds by the other side here if he has continuance though, but that's what's going to have to happen. He's going to have to not fade. Now we're seeing 3.5 now. Does Johnson have the effort to hold on to this gap all the way to the line? About a half a lap to go. 4.3 now, as we can see. Dowling seven seconds back. LaBelle trying to hang on. It's echeloned out. It's straight line, but they are completely in the hurt locker at this point. They would not be sitting in that straight line if they weren't. Now it's starting to calm down. Johnson's able to hold on to 4.3. Only 3.5 for LaBelle. 36 miles per hour from him. Johnson up into 30 miles per hour. He's got another kick on the climb here. 6% gradient. Again, a little bit of a kicker here. They're still chasing them down. It's only three riders. If they had one more in there, four riders, maybe five would make it a little bit easier, but there's, the infighting start, seems to be happening a little bit, only kicking on the climbs now, and Johnson still has more power, it looks like, as far as watts per kilogram go. Out to six seconds. He's got a solid 38 miles per hour. Only 35, 36, 37. You can see here from these riders, it's all about speed, and we are seeing 40 now about... The same on each seconds, still holding on the seven seconds. Now, here's the thing. LaBelle, Dowling, Goulet, are they overworking it? Or, you know, for the sprint, the reality is that if they, they might be just letting them sit out there and not putting in the work to waste their sprint. Johnson, there's no way he's going to have the sprint that these riders will have. Now, look at this, though. Goulet putting in the effort, 6.2, 6.8 from LaBelle, saying that's it. I'll do the work. Go into the front now, as you can see here. Dowling sitting in, though, getting the advantage from these riders who are willing to do the work. And Matt Johnson, all of that out the window as now he's going to be caught. One second, though. It's a race of meters. LaBelle pulling right on through. Got the draft from his fellow countrymen. Johnson 
going to be all about sitting in for Matt Modizi at this point and waiting for that sprint. It was a valiant effort, but there was a lot of effort wasted out there before the sprint. But perhaps he can rest up just enough to bring it home for Odizi. We'll have to see how it's going. It's USA versus Canada at this point, and Goulet and LaBelle trying to throw down up against Dowling and Matt Johnson. But I'm not sure there's any love lost between the fellow countrymen. I think it's every man for himself out there as Goulet now takes up the front at 3.0 watts per kilogram. Dowling now 3.4, 169 beats per minute. No heart rate here coming from Goulet, so cannot win officially. LaBelle as well, no Heart rate. So it's going to be Johnson and Downling, actually, the two Americans that can actually take the official win. Matt Johnson sitting at 145 beats per minute. I think this rider has a pretty good fitness level as that heart rate came flying right on down when it comes to the cardiac drift. That kind of recovery time tells me that this rider is in super fit shape, actually. I mean, like extremely fit. Now, here goes Johnson again, not wanting to sprint, which is interesting. 7.4 watts per kilogram coming from him, as you can see, and LaBelle following up with 11 watts per kilogram, maybe just trying to loosen up the legs between the riders and force some orange numbers, as you can see here. Now, he does not have an arrow power. -up. Maybe that's why he didn't want it to come down to the arrow power-up. He does pop the feather now, as we see. Now, Goulet now coming right on through. Dowling popping the feather power -up. All these feather power-ups, nobody's got an arrow, actually. This is going to be interesting. It's going to come down to watts v. watts, not the power-ups. We're seeing Dolly here, 8.1 watts per kilogram, as you can see. 7.1. Now it's still trying to get away. We predicted it early on that it would be Dowling's show at the end. Matt Johnson off the back, totally burned out. It looks like that was the reality of that attack now, as we are seeing Dowling here, 6.3 watts per kilogram, still trying to get away. Very early sprint coming from him, though. Not perhaps the best tactic. Now on the front. Not getting that draft. Needs to save up again because there's going to be one more kick to the line. They were able to get rid of Matt Johnson, though, because of all of that effort early on. It was a great effort, but ODZ off the back. Now, Goulet, Dowling, LaBelle. Looks like Goulet taking up the front there. 4.0 watts per kilogram toward the front now. There's the finish line. It's within sight. With how close we are, it might just be about who kicks first, though. They went so early. There's an arrow power up there from Goulet. I'm predicting Goulet's probably going to take this with that arrow power up. It's almost unstoppable. Goulet, 11 watts per kilogram. The response is so late. There's no way they're going to close that down at this point. Out to one second. And it is going to be Goulet for the win. No hurry minor on, though, so most likely dialing for the one that's really going to be able to take it on the official results. But still, an amazing sprint there from Goulet. Very well well-timed across the line there with that arrow power up taking the w uh looking back through the results though this looked like it was i believe darren dowling followed up by matt john matt johnson interesting and then julian white i believe that's because the other rider uh coming out of canada there uh was not actually registered uh was with power.com and connected through the my Zwift. so you haven't done so already make sure to jump on over to my.zwift.com and uh, grab the uh, connection there to opt in for ZwiftPower.com. But it does look like Fred Goulet came through for the win, 49.58, followed up by Darren Dowling, uh, 268, and then Matt Johnson, 2028, back for third place. All right, that'll be it for the podium for the men. Back in with the women as the racing is about to be heating up here for the climb in just a moment now. Partella now, as we do, now we are seeing though real quick here, here's a little bit of a replay. Uh, coming on through, and it does look like that was the, um, I believe, the winner that came through there. Uh, not catching exactly. Here's the replay. There's the sprint to the end, and then it was the next two riders that do come across there. So solid effort there from them, as we can see. Back in with the women, though, as we are seeing Bartella now kicking up into 8.4 watts per kilogram, 7.5, as you can see. And then it looks like Baring sitting in. Drafting power up, though. Interesting. As the rider from Team Draft. Comes right on by, 5.56 watts per kilogram. Perhaps not quite wanting to drop her off just yet. Actually, nope, she's on attack mode, as we can see here. 7.1 watts per kilogram. Claudia Berry now looking maybe to put the nail in the coffin now. She's been sitting on Pertella now. 158, 159. Pertella now trying to close that down, as we are seeing. It looks like one second gap. Back to Patella, 183 beats per minute. Now up in the 7 watts per kilogram. This is the moment of truth of whether or not Patella can close this down. It doesn't look like that's going to be happening as she seems to be walking away uh, from the rest of the ladies. Let's go ahead and check on over at uh, ZwiftPower.com. It does look like from the live results currently, Claudia Barron, Teresa Gallagher, and Ashton Mutchler are the only ones that are opted in for ZwiftPower.com. But we can see uh, the average 
for Claudia has been about 30.3 watts per kilogram throughout the duration of the race. She has opened up a 10 second gap now at this point. Not sure that's going to be coming back. Barry now on the solo TT effort off the front now with only about five minutes, I believe, to the finish line. Only seven seconds though, and Pratella still seems more motivated to bring this back as she kicks up in the 5.2 watts per kilogram. She's six second difference now back. A little bit of another kick going to be coming in in just a moment as she comes down toward the river. We'll have to see if that gap gets closed down. Uh, 162 beats per minute, as you can see. Claudia Baring, we'll have to see. Looking back here, we are seeing, though, Goulet uh, from the Men's Zwift Academy um, over, uh, I think, already across the finish line. But uh, interesting to see uh, Goulet here still, as well as um, a few other riders. But still back in with the uh, women's race is what we are looking for here. Um, out on course. We'll see if we can bring that back in uh, to the feet here. And there we go. We're back in with Barry. 5.0 watts per kilogram, 5.2 now at the front. Seven seconds is the difference. Um, and 424, though, all the way back to the other riders. So these two have really opened up a gap, actually. Now, interesting to see, though, Ayo was caught by Mond, and Mond actually got away from Q as well as uh gallagher who had fallen off the pace there so as we can see mond here 2.9 4.0 watts per kilogram and i owe it there 22 seconds back q there 127 so these uh riders who were working together as a chase group full-on explosion for the group there and it looks like uh the riders are now all in no woman's land just trying to hang on for themselves race the truth against themselves out there uh, in this race. So up toward the front again, though, bearing now 4.7, 4.8 watts per kilogram, as you can see. And Portella there, 11 seconds back. Doesn't look like she's going to be closing anything down anytime soon amongst these riders. So interesting to see that uh, bearing here does have the effort. And it's to be expected. We've seen her down in the 150s, 160s, most of the race. Now all the way up to that 180 beats per minute. So definitely been saving up for this moment and just walking away with this W. Now I do know Claudia, she has been in almost every race broadcast. Uh, not riding every race broadcast, but she has been, uh, we've been watching her. Or she's been watching just about every single race broadcast. She's been a part of every Zwift Academy, uh, every single one of the Zwift Academy um Features that we've done on Zwift the Community Live. Lots of questions being asked by her. And I am absolutely positive that she is fully motivated to try and take the W out here for the uh, for the race here, but obviously, but for the overall pro contract with Canyon Tram. So I'd be watching out for Claudia Barron as a finalist uh, with the kind of motivation that we've seen from her as well as the racing we've seen from her in real life um, as well as out on Zwift and in some of the Zwift in real life uh, competitions as well. So uh, Claudia is still there, 4.4 watts per kilogram, currently up into 185 beats per minute, actually. Well, back down to 179 now, so absolutely killing it here with the power. Open it up an 18-second gap and about to come in toward the finish line. She takes that left-hand turn into the final drag here. Pratella now 19 seconds back, also up in the 179 beats per minute. I would say if we look over at ZwiftPower.com, uh, Pratella not currently registered actually with ZwiftPower.com, so we cannot see the average wattage. But I would I would guess that she probably put out a little bit more effort there as far as the tactics of racing uh, than Claudia did out there. Claudia though raising their average for sure right now up to 3.4 watts per kilogram. So definitely putting out a huge effort right now. But now it's starting to back off. We're seeing down to 127 beats per minute or so. So. Perhaps maybe a little malfunction with the heart rate monitor, actually, though, is what I'm thinking is happening in there, as she was definitely up in the 186 or so for quite a while. So I have a feeling that perhaps the heart rate monitor is having a, a little bit of a um, moment there. But we are seeing 5.8 watts per kilogram, a little bit of a kick to the line with that arrow power, power up, letting us know who the winner is out there today. So solid effort there for bearing there with that national champion kits on. Kit on, as you can see. As she does come out of the Canyon Shram kit that they all use in the races. Pertella now about to come across the line at 5.3 watts per kilogram, 180 beats per minute, just a little ways back. She's crossing the line in second place right now. So solid effort there from Pertella as she comes across in second. It will be four minutes back to third place 
or so for the women. So we'll have to wait a little bit here to find their position. But that will be first and second place. Now, Pratella needs to get opted in with SwiftPower.com. But if she does do so and everything is all kosher, she'll be able to, uh, you know, if everything's all good as far as her setup goes and all that kind of stuff, assuming that it is, she does have a heart rate monitor on and everything uh, will be good as far as that goes with uh, with her results. But Claudia Berry does take the win today. Solid effort out there from Claudia and uh, with a solid 3.4 watts per kilogram actually coming from Barry. Now, for the men's results, I'm going to go ahead and chat about those for just a moment as uh, we can go through and talk about the top 10 as they did come on through. So Fred Goulet, it looks like, for the W out there, and then it will be second place, Darren Dowling, followed up by Matt Johnson, and then Julian White, Sam Findlater for Windsor Door Racing, uh, as well as Parker Norman. And then we are seeing Taylor Zwift out there. Billy Wilson, Roy Suk Baba. And then it will be Matthew Keffer for your top 10. Matt Johnson, shout out to him as most aggressive rider as he took a flyer for sure out there. That's a call just from Nathan, no, nothing official, but... Really aggressive racing out there from uh, Matt Johnson, but Fred Goulet able to walk away with it for the provisional results. Make sure you're heading over to ZwiftPower.com for any more information about the results as it does come on in. Quick little replay here, though. There's Johnson. I would call him the most aggressive rider there coming on through. 4.0 watts per kilogram, as we do see. We did see those 6.6 all the way to the top of that climb, but here's Dowling on the attack early on, way out from the finish line but it wasn't going to happen as Goulet as we can see with the arrow power up and about a thousand watts for his kick there's the chase from the other two riders coming across the line and uh, that is how it played out there so solid effort there from the uh, all of the men in the Team Dimension Data Zwift Academy circuit race out there today. Always great to see them out there. Here is the results again. Fred Goulet, Darren Dowling, Matt Johnson, Julian White, and Sam Find later for the top five. Parker Norman, Taylor Swift, Billy Wilson, Suk Baba, and Matthew Keffer. All well over 200 watts, it looks like. 314 for Goulet. And then it looked like a little over 300, I believe, there as well for Matt Johnson. Yeah, 307. So the heavier riders obviously putting out... A lot more watts to match it there to carry it up over the top of those climbs. So then some solid racing out there for the, uh, will be, you know, there was some solid racing all around for the men. And we're going to be jumping into some replays, though, here for the women. Here's Claudia Barron, Gallagher, early on in the racing, only 4.3 kilometers in. As you can see, Pertella there, 4.0 kilogram, watts per kilogram on the front, always taking uh, it, the headwind it looked like. Athens here was an early part of the race, but I was able to hang on all the way through. And then we've got Barron here when she was on the wheel all the way through uh, the race pretty much of Pertella waiting to pounce for those last moments. And here it is, those last moments of the race when she did make the attack. Barron there, 6.6 .6 watts per kilogram on the front, all the way up in the seven for a moment. This is when she got that gap. Opened it all the way up to about 20 plus seconds. TT'd it to the line so claudia berry national champion out of us of a out on swift showing that she is the real deal when it comes to the women's cannon trim swift academy looking for that pro contract so look at the setup there too she's got the cannon shram kit full kit going on there absolutely loving it, it looks like she's got the zip 808s on and the bike i think that she was using out there today uh was i believe um is that a Trek? I'm not positive which uh, which bike she's actually on there. And I'm wondering if Draft actually has a official setup, too. It's looking like out there. But uh, Claudia, absolutely killing it. And there's the arrow power-up. She gives it up a kick into the orange numbers for a moment and uh, shows us how it's done, even for the sprint. If it came down the sprint, I would definitely have rolled the dice on Claudia as well to take the W because she's got a killer sprint. Well, that's it for us today. That is the Zwift Academy race for uh, the circuit race. If you are looking to complete your Zwift Academy races, still, you got to do two of them. And uh, is, is the circuit race, the TT, or 
the climb race. You can do any three of those to show off your talents. Again, this is all about one rider, one pro contract for the men's and the women's with the Academy with Team Dimension Data or Cam and Tram, respectively. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in out there. All the viewers, we are live. Every time we are live, we are either on Zwift Facebook or Zwift Community Lives Facebook. Hit the follow button or like button over there. Or you can get direct notifications to your email or your apps on Twitch, Mixer, or YouTube. All our VODs, of course, always over on YouTube. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Great job to all the riders. And as always, ride on.